Good afternoon, morning, my friends. How's it going? This will be the last sort of talking head video I do for the year. So instead of covering specials that are kind of already gone, I thought what could be cooler than showing you how to get the most out of your PC with just some software settings, no intensive overclocking or anything to that effect. Just some stuff you can do software wise on your PC to make sure it's giving you the best performance. Okay, so the first place we're going to start off is here in the task manager okay this is where startup is now handled from no more ms config or anything like that you do everything from this window over here so in the window you can see i've disabled pretty much everything it's very important you do this i'm even going to disable my stream deck because i've just recently installed that but i'm only having the apps and stuff pop up that i'm actively using all the time i don't really want those services and those applications running in the background because it's little bits of time that the processor has to dedicate to hosting those services and running those services so it just makes the system less responsive if i left all of those going my system would feel pretty horrible i'm not gonna lie so i disable purposefully go in here and disable everything especially the windows functions like cortana and onedrive those scan your system continuously and make the thing very slow and speaking of windows settings and scanning stuff i absolutely hate user account control it creates an interrupt every single time you try and use something it's constantly scanning your running applications etc so it does take like a lot of the responsiveness out of the pc this has been a thing since windows 7 and i've never ever used it i always turn it off it does theoretically decrease the security of your machine you you know i'm talking to you, you know who you are out there i'm looking at you turn this thing off it's rubbish but now moving on to the important stuff in video control panel there isn't quite as much stuff in the amd control panel i believe you can set the power mode like you do in this but it's not quite as comprehensive but we're actually going to start off over here over this page all right this is exactly how your settings should be set up should have used my prem preference emphasizing performance that should be set up like that and that's going to just tell the gpu to push as hard as it possibly can and not really worry about the actual image quality as much you'll do that with your settings in game the actual gpu is just going to try and give you the most frame rate which is exactly what we're going to set up in the 3d settings over here as well so dsr factors is one that you can switch off i actually prefer to have it off normally um this is just because i installed the driver yesterday and i kind of really set some stuff so i could show you but dsr factors i would normally turn off unless you have like a really good 1080p monitor that you want to upscale to like a 2k image then you do the 1.78 x times uh, that'll give you 1440p scaling into games so you can scale up like if you've got a 3080 but you're on a 1080p screen then you can scale up and get a, just a bit of a better image quality but that is going to impact your general 1080p performance if you are looking well to get 1080p performance then definitely turn that sucker off then monitor is going to be dependent on yours mine's g mine or g-sync monitors so both of them have that but then here's a really important one on your power you must have prefer maximum performance and similarly this is going to try and push the gpu and give it as much wattage as it possibly can take and the offset of that is it does give you higher boost clocks after that you want to keep going down and make sure your texture filtering quality is on high performance and then after that everything else should be the same as what i have here there really shouldn't be anything else to change over there just hit apply all right then um yeah it might do a bit of a screen flicker on you as it's just done there especially when you turn off the dsr factors then that's a thing it does like a little little test of that your desktop color settings and stuff this is going to be case by case dependent you can see i've got the alienware 227 240 and the uh, dull s2721 hgf 144 27 and like for instance the va monitor has much better contrast and color reproduction than the ips so you can see i've had to boost the ips comparatively to try and get it to balance and it's still it just can't do the same kind of contrasting as the va but this is going to be case by case dependent but what you want to do is to actually you work off of the top beam over here right you can see like the different colors and everything like that but this will tell you where your oversaturation and stuff is coming from so examples if i just slide this all the way to the end you can see the purple in that area and the red growing like 
way outside of its normal bounds that's when you know you're really hitting the limits of where the monitor and the saturation should be at and especially with ips things tend to get a little bit mexico filter when you do throw vibrance at it to cure that what you've got to do is fiddle with your contrast and your brightness brightness especially offsets that sort of yellow tint that ips tends to give and then lastly we come to where all of this setup is actually pushing us to get that better performance is going to be an MSI afterburn and this is going to be card specific it's going to be case by case how much performance improvement you do get with the default power sliders and it will work on absolutely any graphics card it doesn't have to be an msi gaming x or anything to that effect but I will say from having done this a number of number of number of times, the best cards to do this on are generally like your higher end cards, like your ROG Strix and your MSI Gaming X, because those have really good fan curves and already really good cooling and stuff. And the result of increasing those sliders is often about two degrees in, in temperature, but it can often be like as much as like 100, 150 megahertz on the core, which actually creates quite a noticeable difference in games. And honestly, having the power limits pushed out also improves your 0.1% and your 1%. So it makes your general frame rate, like your low frames, much higher and much more stable. So to do this, all you'd really need to do is this would normally be, if I just um, um, put it back to where it normally would be, it'd normally be sitting like that on 183. Uh, these are locked uh, interlinked sliders. So they will go up like that together. Then all you've got to do is hit the little save icon in the middle here, save it to your profile. You can set this to start up with Windows if you want to. I prefer to have it uh, off like I've shown you with everything switched off. And then as I need modules and stuff, then I like to activate them. But you can hit that little thing. So then it'll the start up with windows and then if you hit the lock key over there then you hit apply over there then this is the locked in profile and you won't be able to switch or change between any of the other profiles now something else you can do just to make sure your attempts and everything and stuff are done correctly is have the monitor going which looks like this uh, you can just leave it in the background while you're gaming and then come back to it when you are going in and out of titles etc when you are running gaming at the moment my gpu usage is sitting like that because i'm actually recording through it that's why i wanted to set it up like this so you could see the gpu usage usage the, the temperature that's coming through from using it to do that like a huge amount of data in here actually even your cpu stuff you can check from here it's uh it's quite comprehensive but you can have an on-screen display as well set up with it if you go to monitoring over here then you can select what to monitor just double check on those ticks because as you can see i've got a 24 core or 12 thread 24 core 12 core 24 thread there we go cpu and because of that it's got like 17,000 display things uh, parameters in there that's those are the ones you always see when we're doing benchmarking and stuff like jays or uh, or, or uh, games nexus or whatever we all use this uh reva tuner through msi afterburner because of how well it works and that can then sit in your top left hand corner and then give you that impertinent information just to make sure you're not pushing the system too far and that is basically the setup I do on pretty much every single PC out of box, unless I'm going to sit and tune the, you know, processor and the graphics card and find overclock and do all of the rest of it. Those are like defaults that I just run on absolutely every PC and it works really well, kind of no matter the level that you have. What I will say is uh, NVIDIA cores tend to stop giving boost at 74 degrees that seems to be the nominal point where they start to declock so if it is hitting that with the settings then it might be counterproductive just monitor your your frame rates and your and your core clocks to check if it is actually doing its thing the rest of the settings that you do in, in the nvidia and stuff just gives you really stable power throughput and like i said makes your game that much more stable and so you don't have funny dips and little like lags and then you want to you know throw stuff at your screen anywho Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side.